afternoon, everybody. Y'all having a good day? Y'all see those clouds? I've been thinking all day it was going to rain. It has looked strange today in the sky. Y'all see this bridge right here we're going across? Y'all, I don't know if it's true or not. Trying to find out, I was told that they have found three bodies. Train, the train runs under there, the train track. And uh, I was told by somebody that was at a barbecue house right there by that overpass that there was officers with like uh, the suits, like the hazmat suits. And somebody went and asked, out and asked them what was going on. And they found a body. They was bringing a body up out of there. And they said that was the third one recently. Now what recently is, I don't know. But I am trying to find out, y'all. It's kind of disturbing to me. But the salon I worked at is right there across from that barbecue house. Uh, I hadn't worked there in about five years, six years. But... Uh, that's where I worked for almost 20 years of my 31 year career in doing hair. So I don't know if it's true or not, but they said one of the bodies had been stabbed, but I know a lot of our homeless people live in those woods by that railroad track. That's where they sleep at night. If they don't go to our mission center here, which is called God Tell. They can go there and get a hot meal and they have a like a church service and they offer them a bed for the night. But a lot of uh, homeless people, y'all, live in this area. And they live out on the streets and in the woods uh, in tents. There is a whole community of tent people out in the woods in this area. And uh, the church I used to go to, we used to take them bags. We'd collect donate donations of socks and things that they would need, foods, you know, uh, like camping food, something that would uh, hold up know without refrigeration and uh, only two people were allowed to go in their camp uh, all I know is it's way back through the woods and they don't allow people in there and I don't know how these people found them but uh, I give a lot of things to donate and help to make the bags uh, little backpacks, but uh, I never, I never got to go out there actually to the home or uh, to their camp tent site. But it's a way you can't see it, you know. So a lot of people don't even realize it's in the area. But these two people from our church were the only people that were allowed to go back there, and they said it was a huge community and that it was growing. So. I don't know. If it wasn't through a church organization, I might not even believe that, you know. But since it was through the church and people that I know and our pastor had to approve for the donation, so he had to know it was real or our church wouldn't have been doing that. But, like I said, I visited with a friend. She actually came to my house earlier and visited and she was telling me about it. And I was like, what? No, I hadn't heard about that. Because she was wanting to know if I if I knew anything. And of course I didn't. I don't go anywhere to find out anything. But I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to see what I can find out. I do have friends that work at the Sheriff's Department. And Denise. So I will try to find out if that's true. I haven't seen anything on the news about it. 
but I mean, this person I trust. Uh, I've known her my whole life since, you know, like ninth grade or something. And uh, so I, I trust her when she tells me that, you know, it was seen them actually taking the body out of there. And they said that was the third one that they had found recently. So y'all, that makes me wonder what's going on. And that one had maybe been stabbed. What y'all think about that? Isn't that kind of scary? I mean, that's like two miles, three at the most from my house. I mean, anything can happen, you know, in an area. There's no safe area really anymore. You know, it used to be certain, certain streets or certain parts of town and you know whatever it ain't it ain't even like that no more i don't care what nobody says i i don't care what anybody in this town's opinion is about that i live here and i go all over this town and one section of town and this day and time is just like another section of town i'm telling y'all Now, there might be a few streets that might have some poor people, you know, but I wouldn't say it was more dangerous. Uh, they're not more dangerous just because they have less money. But I always pick at some people I know because, you know, they think they're living in the best neighborhoods. And I said, you know what? I bet your neighborhood gets robbed before mine. It, I'm telling you, it happens. I mean, people over in my neighborhood, we just common folks. We ain't got nothing to steal. They have stuff to steal. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have more things. And uh, we just common folks over in my neighborhood. <laughs> in my neighborhood, we ain't got nothing to take. But I tell y'all what I have done over the years in my neighborhood. Many many times people that needed to eat on my road I've given them food I've had people knock on my door there used to be a girl that rented a trailer up the road and her boyfriend was all into drugs and he was always going off for days at a time and leaving her and I talked to her talked to her and begged her to get away go to her sisters or do something Actually, there's been several of those girls in my life on my road. And uh, she would come to my door and want to know that I have any work that she would work for food. Because she would, he had been gone maybe three days or whatever. She'd tell me and start crying. Bless her heart. She was young. And uh, I would just tell her to sit on the porch and I would go in and make her food, fix her leftovers, make her a sandwich, or make her a plate, make her a sandwich, and tell her to take it with her. And uh, I'd tell her, no, I'm not going to feed him. <laughs> and she'd laugh at me. I'd tell her, I ain't going to feed him. But if he's not there, you can take this home and you eat. But you need to get out of that situation. I don't know whatever happened to them. They eventually moved. But y'all, there's been, uh, over the years, you know, there's been, uh, there used to be like a little trailer park up the road, but people moved in and bought the land and moved the trailers out. And, uh, but when that trailer park was up there, I dealt with that a lot. Or, um, uh, people needing a ride to the emergency room or something like that. And, uh, I take them and drop them off and I have gone and picked them up and bought them home. Uh, you know, I mean, I tried to help them as much as I could. But, um, you know, I didn't have a lot, but I could share what I had. And they knew I would. And uh, a lot of people on the neighborhood was uh, scared of them. And I said, why are you scared of them? They're just people. And... Uh, They'd always come to my house. They wouldn't go to the other neighbors. They'd always come to my house. Uh, I had an inside phone way back when part of that was going on, and they'd want to use my phone. 
and I tell them, let, let me bring it to the porch. I would never let them come in my house. And they respected that. I'd bring the phone out on the porch and they'd call who they needed to. And Usually it was somebody to come pick them up or something. But, you know, sometimes people just have hard times. It's not always their choice. So, uh, I, I've tried to help people, you know, when I can. But, y'all, some of them little girls, they were just pitiful. Like, I want to be the queen mother. Well, now, why is all these people stopped up here? Maybe they're taking pictures in the blue bonnets on the highway. Oh, they're unloading something. Oh, that's one of them little, uh, oh, there's a tree fell across the road. Oh, that's fell, y'all, since I've left the house. He's got a, that's like a little, uh, that's like a little bobcat, but it's, uh, it's got blades on the front, y'all, like a saw kind of thing. I don't know how to explain it. I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about. It has like teeth and it goes back and forth uh, like a, y'all, all I can think of is a uh, hedge trimmer. I can't think of anything else to describe it. But that's what the front, that was cool. He was standing on that riding. God, he didn't have no cones or nothing out. I hope uh, nobody comes over that hill and hits him. Like it's a dangerous spot right there on that highway. Them cars atop that hill and trying to, you know, get, they know the speed limit changes right there and it gets up to about 65 or 70. Uh, and then part of that sea was across the highway. I hope nobody hits him. Oh, that makes me nervous to even think about it. Oh, goodness. Look at that chicken out in my flower bed. Y'all see that? Y'all see that outlaw right there? Oh, me and Herfus have Jesus come to Jesus meeting. She knows better than get out of that fence. She's done that a few times the last few days. I bet I fix her in the morning before she gets off that roost. That, I'll cut that wing off. She won't She won't get over that fence tomorrow. I'll fix her. She'll get a haircut. That's two or three days. I haven't caught her. I knew one of them was doing it because some, well, somebody was slinging them leaves out of that flower bed. I knew somebody was doing it. But I didn't know who was doing it. But now, she is caught red-handed. She is caught red-handed. See, that's the one with the spurs, y'all. She's the outlaw with the spurs. Now, she, she's jumping over that five-foot fence. See, them guineas can't even get out of there. Their wings cut. Hey, it's for their own good. Them stray dogs, well, they ain't stray dogs, but they run up and down the road like they stray dogs. Look at her. She won't be able to do that tomorrow when I take one of them wings off. I'm gonna give you a haircut, little missy. I'm gonna give you a haircut, you little outlaw woman. Hey, rising sun. Hey, Moses. Did y'all take care of Brindley while Mama was gone? Did y'all take care of Brindley? And look, here's old Sister Kitty rubbing on my leg. She's happy Mama's home. And I bet Brindley is too. Okay, y'all, I got a couple of bags of stuff to get out of the car. Thanks for riding along with me. And y'all be blessed. And uh, don't forget to say your prayers.